All right, good morning, everybody. It is Monday morning. Um, I was just gonna take you guys out. I gotta put some shocks that I got rebuilt on my 97 EXT. I'm gonna put those on real quick. I finished up the skid last night. Well, 98% of it. The only thing I got left is, uh, oh, the only thing I got left is, um, just the two front bogey wheel brackets. And then once, ow, once I get those on, they go right here. Then I'll be able to put my front bogey wheels on, so. Yeah, I finished up kind of late, so I figured I'll just leave the tools in there. Go from there. Well, I got the ZRT out of here just a minute ago. And now I'm getting ready to, I pulled this guy back in. In the orientation that I need them, need it, so that way I can start putting the track on. Look, the track is right there. We're getting ready. Getting ready to get this track on here, man. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna put these shocks on, but I'm gonna throw these shocks on there because, <coughs> excuse me, I noticed that um, I was getting. I was getting a little bit of oil on one side. So, get all kinds of crap on the floor. So, I figured I'd get him rebuilt because I got him rebuilt the year before by my shop guy. And uh, I took him to him and he said, yep, there was a bad seal. So, he, he rebuilt him for free. All right. Let me set you guys down. up kids <laughs> it's nice enough to get out so why not get out all right so all this stuff's kind of got dust and stuff or not dust but like just dirt or whatever on it. um yeah so this is the 97 ext and i put those are zrt shocks on there so i'm just gonna go ahead and <clears throat> Those on. Perfect. Then let go. Alright, last one we go back in. Start getting that track ready. We're getting the sled ready, put that track on. Alright, that's it. Oh yeah, just ready to go. All right, so this is where we're at. That's going in. I got a new bearing here. Seat's got a rip in it. Don't like it. I don't know if I'm gonna do that this year or not. See how much money I have. Got the flanges, those are all gonna have to be wiped down. What are you doing What's up here? with that hat? Wasn't there a blue one? Kira's. <laughs> That's Kira's? Why are you wearing Kira's hat? <laughs> she what? Oh. Is it cold out? Yeah. Yes. It's just windy. Yeah. Yeah. Well, hopefully from here on out it's gonna. No. Stay cold at least. Gotta refreeze that ground, don't we? Yeah, it's muddy and wet. Eh, I wouldn't go as far as saying that it's muddy, but it's definitely gooey. Soggy. Yeah. <laughs> it's got some goo to it. Alright. Um, gotta get a light. Uh, dust on everything. I gotta find a better method. All right, so pop that off. So what I need to do is get that bottom gear. I need to get the 
So really the first thing to do is just to get that uh, axle up in there. And then uh, just put some silicone on the back of the bearing and then slip it over the axle there and that'll seal that. Um, let's see. I'm going to get you guys over here. For now, turn the flash off because that'll kill the bat's me. That's the axle. The drive cogs on it. I refinished that, at least the interior portion. The rest of it was in pretty good shape. Alright, there's that. Oh, yeah. Could probably put the bearing on this end. Got the, the gear. The bearing flange. And I had to, <laughs> had to use the nut for something. <laughs> well, sometimes you gotta do it. It's the only thing I had. And I was trying to get rid of all the, the excess down here, because before I did this, I had all that, all those threads right there, they were sticking out the end. So, just like that. Started looking around for the other nine. I'm like, oh crap, where's the other one? I was like, oh, that's right, I put the top gear on already. Briefly, that powder even gets. Ridiculous. How was everybody's Thanksgiving? You guys have a good Thanksgiving? Good Christmas and stuff? I don't think anybody's actually commented. I've seen some stuff on YouTube, but or on uh, Facebook. But mine was okay. I went to uh, my wife's family's house for, uh, Thanksgiving, and then we just kind of chilled out at home. <clears throat> on Christmas Day, and then we have to go see Star Wars, the ninth episode, to end the saga. All right, so that's that, and let's, uh, what did I do with the Zibetinks? Oh, here they are. It's the flanges. Helps when you keep stuff together, people. So those are going to go on the one end. little box of goodies a couple things are powder coated uh, that's the um, the belt cover hinge those are the intake flanges that is the ground and cord tie plate and then uh, the two lower shock bolt spacers and then the spring retainers <gasps> excuse me spacers and the springs oh, they turned out pretty good last year I used orange on I think it's my wife's sled the, her, her springs and it, it it was fine looked great didn't look as good as this it looked good um but it shipped in a few spots so it being powder coat is like a plastic and it's flexible um should be good to go there all right well what i did find <sighs> this was the only one that i found over here Does not sound good though. But I found this, so it's got parts galore everywhere.
It's the little coupler rod that goes in between. And it's flexible. It's just like the speedometer cable. But uh, it sticks into the end of the drive shaft, the drive axle. And then it sticks into here. And then as the drive axle turns, it spins up. And then that, um, the speedo cable is in the end of that. It goes all the way up to this the speedometer. This bag. I'll pack this full of grease when I put it on, right before I put it on. But yeah, I seal that whole area up. The bearing flanges, the bearing, that way nothing can get up in there. And all it does is hold grease. Not grease and water, grease and sand. All right. Still got to figure out what I'm going to do about a axle bearing. I thought I had one. I think you can pop these seals out. This does not feel good. I mean, it doesn't feel bad. Well, it just feels dirty. Yeah. Let me see what I can find and then I'll be back. All right, so I can't find it. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to go up to the shop and get me another one <laughs> so that's what we're about to do i'm gonna wrangle up the kids and then we'll get on out all right you guys ready Were you sitting on were you sitting on something out there? Yeah. No. What Kira? Okay, well hurry up. Is that door locked? Yes. Okay, come on. Alright guys, so I have had this kind of put things on hold last night, got a little late. I've had this uh, bearing set of bearing flanges. Uh, siliconed and crimped around the bearing that goes on the PTO side here. So I'm going to get this locked on here and then we're going to install this drive shaft and belt. Oh, I'm sorry, track <laughs> belt. I was thinking the PTO side there. Make sure I got flowing silicone. I do. Good there. Got that all cleaned up and ready to go. It's about as cleaned up as it's going to get. Doesn't seem like there's really... I don't want to scrub all the... Because uh, the zinc coating, if you take anything abrasive to it, it will scratch that off. And it looks like, I'd say probably... 95% of it's intact, so I'm just going to go ahead and leave it. Uh, I will have to fill this up with some grease. And I am going to go with the old low temp grease. I need to get me another... I don't think I have... There's a good one. Yeah, so I'll use these during the day. I mean, they're only like 13 bucks. 9 mil. And I get them at Harbor Freight for like 13 bucks. And if it's the only thing I'm buying, I'll use the 20% off coupon and get them for less. But they're, these are extra large. There are 50 gloves in here, so 25 pairs. So I just try to conserve them as much as possible. I'll use them during the day. And if I don't wreck them, I don't get any holes. Even this one has a little tiny hole in it right there. I'll still use it. You know, no sense just taking it off, throwing it away because I'm done for the day. So I'll take them off. Uh, they'll flip inside out. You know, your hands sweat on the inside. It'll give them a chance to uh, dry off. And then I'll, uh, if they're not dried off, I'll wipe them off and then turn them inside out. 
and reuse them or normally they're dried off by the next day so all right going to put this sucker on here seems a little loose but you don't have to have a whole lot of tension on these to set them it's just a set screw nothing crazy Yeah, these are millimeters, so I think I should probably go with Sounds good to me. All right, so there's that. And the other thing I like to do is uh, coat this side here. So I'm gonna oops, wipe this off. And then I have brand new bolts. There we go. Three. There we go. All right. Uh, let's see here. That's covered. Got my nuts, my bolts, my washers. Got the old silicone on the end there. Oh, let's see. Probably gonna run out of this stuff. Just to be mentally and These are another thing I try to keep around as long as possible. So it's already happening. So what I'll do it's got most of the grease in there. Like I said, I ran out, so alright. And when they get used up with grease like this, I just toss them. I don't want to deal with that. Now, give this one more good wipe here. I like all this sealed up. I won't have to worry about any water getting in there. So it's all going to get a coat of silicone. All right, so I believe we can go ahead and move right on over to the sled now. All right, so I got the track out here. This is a one and a quarter inch, 121 inches long by 15 inches wide composite talon. A T320. I got this through Kerry Osborne. He's uh, up north. And uh, yeah, he's got some of the best prices around on tracks. So yeah, definitely uh, check with him if you're interested in getting any kind of composite track. Um, yeah, he's, he's the, one of the ways to go big time. So 
And it was pretty fast shipping too. So thanks a lot, Carrie. I appreciate that. A little plug for you. All right, so we got the track down there. It's in the right direction uh, because the tracks do have a specific way they're supposed to turn. So uh, normally what I do is I will hang the track up here because normally I'll, I'll put it in one of the holes for the steering, the bottom steering shaft support. All right. Take my hat off, I'm a little hot. Get all the some nuts and washers over. Right. These guys are awesome. Hard to break, baby. Most of them suckers up in there. All right, here's one. All right, so got one bolt up in there. So that way I protect the finish of the dry shaft there as it goes through the hole. Now I got one bolt here. Give it a little bit of a lift. 
two. Let's get number three. I'm gonna do this with my fingers. Get a little dirty here for going on like this. Ooh, that's almost dead on. Yeah, that might work. And yeah, you definitely want to get a little bit of grease on the end of this, in my opinion. That way that thing doesn't get welded up in there. Ouch. But in this case. We're not gonna have to deal with any water getting in there. Oh yeah, I like a glove, baby. That's what I like. Two. advantage of that little flat side there too. Put that right on the edge. All right, so got that on there. I hope it recorded. It seemed like it kind of froze up on me for some reason, but uh, got all three bolts in, washers, um, lock nuts, and we're going to wait an hour and come back and torque it down. All right, let's go over to the other side. All right. Let me grab. You know what I wish I had? I wish I had like a magnet tripod, magnetic tripod. Let me grab the old trusty stool. Set you guys up so you can see what's going on. There we go, it's a little better. Alrighty, I got everything I need. So I got <clears throat> three brand new, oh, one thing I'm missing. I got three brand new lock nuts. Got my Loctite. Even though they're nylock, I still put it on there. It's not gonna hurt anything. Uh, let me go ahead and pull this off now. Uh, oh, okay, yeah. This looks like it's sticking really far out. <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought. There we go. Okay, that's better. All right, so... I got the brand new bearing cleaned off. And I'm going to go ahead and hit the back of the bearing with a little bit of silicone as well. Got the bearing all cleaned off, inside and out. What you wanna do is coat the whole inside of the bearing. It's actually better if you get it on the, the shaft first because then it's not getting all along the shaft. We'll get her done either way. Just getting a little silicone to hang over this edge right here.
in the hopes of it blocking as much grime in there as possible. Now I know it's going to break loose. Okay, so if it's just a little crack instead of the whole spot right there. Come on, sucker. Let's go. It's not going to get in the bearing itself because it's not going to adhere to the insides of those little lips because of the grease that's in there. So it'll let loose over the grease. Be good to go. All right, Get that up out of the way. Oh, I'm not sure if I clean that. Let's make sure it's nice and grease free. Sure, this seems like a overkill to some people, but you know what? A little bit of extra. Go tell my kids. A little extra elbow grease in the beginning. Save you a lot of hassle in the end. I think what I did last time is I put a block. That should be okay, actually. Let's see if we can. Turn the track. A little. There we go. Is it going to sit without touching? Yes, it is. Just gob it on the back. You want it to seal to the shaft. Yeah, with just silicone. Just like that. So you got that all the way around. And then, just make sure everything's clean. Getting a little ahead of myself here, folks. Get too excited, man. I've been waiting to put this. I mean, I've had this whole chain case in for like, gosh, a month and a half, two months at least. I want to put this thing in so stinking bad. I got a little bit on there. It's okay. All right, let's see. Oh, that freaking, ooh, that hurt. All right, I think that's good. Woo. Put it right on the outside of this, too. shaky today cut out coffee for like six months and then I started drinking it again And one thing you got to make sure of is that you get all that silicone off the 
all the way around because when you put the the this gasket on here this is what i found out it's a brand new gasket when you put that little o-ring on there what happens it'll pop out when you try and tighten it down you don't want that so get everything you can Lock out of the way. Get up there. It's New Year New Year's Eve, folks. What y'all got going on? Anything? I am just gonna chill out at home. That's what I do these days. 42 years old. No need to go out anymore. It's just another day, really. Yeah, you know, we got, hey, a new year. But, <laughs> hey, every year there's a new year. <laughs> All right, I think I'm good to go here. Yeah, New Year's Eve is just, I don't know, it's almost too late for me to stay up. <laughs> I'm a party animal until about 9 o'clock. <laughs> All right, so that's good now. Light's not in the best spot. Sorry. Okay, let me just smooth it out. You know, just to make sure. Because if the rubber's twisted when you when you put it on, like if it rolls on, if it catches all the way, if you set it in place on one side and then you roll it on on the other side, it'll roll back up. So I just put it on and then smooth it out. Oh, yeah. And then I got my new nuts here. Tradesman fasteners, once again. That's where I get all my stuff, all my bolts and nuts and washers. Let's see if I can get this light up a little higher for you guys. Cross threaded or anything. Yeah, I remember one of these had, was that, which one was that for? That may have been for my wife's 96ZR. This case had one of these that was completely stripped out. Okay, so one of these top ones here was stripped out. So I had to take the whole case off and <clears throat> bang it out. I ordered some new ones. And they're different. They're not like carriage bolt style. They're, they are kind of like carriage bolts, but they have a knurled edge instead of a square just under the head. So you got to tap them in, you know, I had to tap the old one out, tap the new one in. Took one off here. And with the reds is better in my opinion. And who doesn't like the gold? Yellow, of course. That's a Austin Powers reference. From gold member. He likes gold. It's hard to believe how old some of them movies are already. Just saw a thing on Facebook today on the book that said it was a meme that showed like some buses caught in snow. And there's a bunch of snow and it said something like the epic throwback from 20... From 1996 Blizzard. <laughs> 23 years ago. Oh my gosh. Graduated in 95. It doesn't seem that long, folks. I'll tell you that. And I try to go based, you know, I try to. I don't really like going by numbers as far as age. Oops. Um. I promised myself I would go based off of how I feel. So, I'm going to treat my holy temple, as the Bible says, as best I can. 
and uh, you know, I can feel the best I can for as long as I can. Okay. I believe this is like 13, 11 maybe. Lot maybe it's 11. 11 foot pounds. Could always check in the manual as well. All right, let's check here. There's the manual. Uh, I believe it's right around 400. So it's like bearing flange plate nuts, 16 to 18. There it is. Drive and driven shafts, 16 to 18, baby. And we'll go to 17. There we go. This guy on. Let's see here. Straight edge cross both sides, measure any offset. The sprockets should be aligned within 31 thousandths. Sprockets are not aligned, change the thickness of the spacer, washer. Behind the upper sprocket to align the so sprockets. You want to be able to adjust this in or out to bring it within that 31 thousandths or 0.8 of a millimeter. So Trusty feeler gauge, so let's go with the thickest one. It's 31. And that's pushing it out, so we're good. Let's say just over 25. Definitely not 31, so we're, th we're within the limits. And if I put another one on there, it's just going to eat it up. Eat up the space. All right, we're good. Good deal, good deal. Some red lock tight. I'm just going to hold on to both. go top bottom not put the parking brake on a lot of people just uh, snug them up. I like to go buy the book. To each their own. Books got torque specs for a reason. Upper and lower sprocket nights 35 to 40. So that's why I went 37. Never hurts to verify. Making some progress, people. Even when they look like they're straight, they're not.
Yeah, that feels about good. That's got a seal, if I remember correctly. Yep. Mr. Redundant. Just a hair, it's not going to hurt anything. Is it overkill? You know, the manuals all tell you to go through after so many hours with every machine. The owner's manual will tell you to go through and retort stuff, tighten things up, because yeah. Vibration, especially on a two-stroke like this, will loosen things up. So, a little bit of blue Loctite. Drop case cover bolts, 13 to 15. 14 sounds good. So next, we are going to go ahead and put the skid in. Okay, so what I decided to do, which I actually have to do, is put the shocks on first so it can sit up on the shocks. We need to get the springs on first. Nice. Just going to go ahead and slap these on here. can't remember if this is the correct height or not. I get all my shocks rebuilt by Guy Kitchen, and he is in Michigan, and is an excellent price. So hit him up. I believe he's on the book. I just need these in here to hold up the front end. Okay, that's one side. So I will do the other side and come back. And then we'll uh I'll have the skid or the uh sled drop down and ready for a skid install. Alright, we got everything set up for the most part. Got the front shocks on, and yes, the, the front uh Mag side, I did put up there, upside down. I should have put the the more uh, compressed side side of the coil at the top. Um, I don't think I have, but oh, they may be closed. Do you have the rears? I know that. Uh, let's see. I think that's probably one of the ones I forgot. So, um, let's go ahead and stick this up in here. Anyway. Should be done with two people. 
I've done it before. Every other time by myself, so. Let's see. Might be enough far enough in there now. So It's just about it. 